Hello, and thank you for your interest in the Orbit Determination Toolkit version 7.4. My name is Jim Woodburn, and I am the Chief Orbital Scientist at AGI, and I'm going to be discussing some of the new features and capabilities that are coming out in ODTK 7.4 today. The first feature that I would like to talk about is the new initial geolocation feature. Now, ODTK has been able to process um, TDOA and FDOA measurements for a long time for the purpose of refining an initial estimate of an emitter location. The addition of the new initial geolocation capability, however, allows ODTK to go directly from nothing but raw TDOA measurements to an initial location for the emitter, which can then be seamlessly fed into the ODTK sequential filter for further refinement and the development of an accurate error covariance. So with this new feature, we can now go the complete cycle from raw measurements to a refined estimate. The second feature I'd like to talk about is the addition of support for the CCSDS, which is the Consultative Committee for Space Data Standards, AEM, which is the Attitude Ephemeris Message uh, format for bringing in attitude information for spacecraft. Um, this is part of a general effort to support additional um, CCSDS formats and is a complement to the already existing CCSDS Orbit Ephemeris Message and the CCSDS Tracking Data Message formats um, already supported by ODTK. The next capability I want to talk about is the ability to estimate corrections to central body ephemeris. Now this is a, a new capability in ODTK 7.4 that is targeted towards missions to small bodies, such as asteroids, where the a priori ephemeris solution for that small body is not as accurate, perhaps, as you would like it to be. So the capability that's been added to ODTK allows you to estimate corrections to the a priori ephemeris for the small body. And this is a natural complement to the optical navigation measurement support that was added in ODTK 7.2. Also uh, useful for our deep space users in 7.4, we've added support for the um, small uh, forces file that is familiar to uh, people used to using the JPL uh, navigation software. Um, we've added a convenience feature where you can directly import the content of a small forces file into ODTK um, without need for manual intervention. So it's a convenience feature that uh, should increase efficiency and uh, reduce the possibility of errors in transferring information over. And finally, staying on the deep space theme for one more moment, we've also added the DSN-INS measurement model. Um, DSN is the, the JPL Deep Space Network, and INS stands for Interferometric Narrowband Spacecraft Measurements. And what these are, are they're, they are um, a form of differenced one-way Doppler measurements where the spacecraft is transmitting and the signal is being received at two different uh, DSN ground stations, each of which produces one-way Doppler measurements from receiving those transmissions. Uh, then in ODTK, we can difference the uh, two one-way Doppler measurements to remove the effects of the spacecraft clock. This type of measurement is valuable during very early mission operations while the spacecraft is still near the Earth and um, two-way coherent communication is not possible yet. Finally, how often have you wondered what changes you've made between two different saved versions of ODTK scenarios? Well, the new version of ODTK, version 7.4, includes a scenario comparison tool that will allow you to quickly and easily make that determination um, based on comparing two, two saved ODTK scenario files. Now this is something that of course can be done 
using generic file comparison utilities, but those aren't always in place uh, in places where ODTK is installed. So this new uh, feature will be very valuable um, to a lot of users who, like me, often forget what changes they made in their scenarios. And I know I'm going to be a very frequent user of this feature. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief tour of what's new in ODTK 7.4, and thank you for your time.